Hello again, Andrea Tarowski with Dental Tutoring. So I have been doing, let's see, so far I've done about eight videos today because I have a lot of things to talk about because you are all awesome and you have been asking me some questions, which is amazing. So, so please just ask anything you like. I am happy to talk about it. So what I want to talk about is my experience as a temp hygienist. And I say this because actually something inspired me. I was in a group this morning um, on Facebook, I forget the name, sorry, um, some dental hygiene networking group, and somebody posted about, um, or somebody posted something to temp hygienists saying, um, in so many words, please make sure to write in your notes properly, I am sick and tired of seeing people um, where they're writing, you can hardly see what it says, they haven't written everything that they need to. Um, please make sure to write in the charts properly. And, you know, she makes a good point. Of course, we should all do that. And I have seen some charts where a temp hygienist has come in or just whoever, and they wrote maybe two lines um, and they didn't sign it. And it just doesn't make sense, right? Because I don't really know what to think. Um, but I also feel that I have to stick up for us temp hygienist also because I am now a temp um, hygienist and I love it but one of the hard things of our job is that we are always in a new office or we're in an office where you know the previous um, hygienist who saw them didn't write proper notes didn't do a proper cleaning didn't do this didn't do that but there's always um, reasons for everything if that makes sense like we can't automatically think okay this person, you know, he was in six months ago, yet there's so much plaque, so much tartar. Oh my gosh, like, it doesn't look like they were in for like three years. So did the hygienist not do her work properly? You know, we have to stop thinking that. We have to stop thinking that the hygienist before us didn't do their work properly. Because you know what? Anything can happen. Um, a perfect example is I had a, um, I had a patient who, you know, to make a long story short, let me just think about this for a second, but he was upset that I was not the hygienist that he usually saw. We were talking for like 10 minutes. I pretty much said, I, I understand. You are more than welcome to book your appointment, but um, I'm sorry, but it's me today. Um, all in all, he said, no, I'm in a hurry, you know, hurry up and clean my teeth. So obviously I'm not in the right state of mind either. The last thing that I, wanted to do was clean his teeth, but I did to the best of my ability, but he was like, oh, it hurts, oh, it hurts, ow, ow, ow. So, you know, I am getting sick and tired. I am getting annoyed. So did I clean his teeth properly? No, because he didn't let me. Am I going to put in the chart, I didn't clean his teeth properly? Um, sorry for the next hygienist who sees him. No, I'm not. But I do put in my chart something to the effect of the patient was sensitive throughout the entire appointment. He didn't allow me to do a deep cleaning, you know, things like that so that I am telling the next hygienist, you know, in so many words, I'm sorry, but he just wasn't letting me do the work, right? So never ever think, oh, well, the other hygienist, she was lazy, look what she left me with. Do not, th th do not think that because you just, you don't know. So when I saw that, I guess, message in the Facebook group, I kind of, and I did say something back and in, in a nice way, but I did say, you know, I do understand where you're coming from, but as a temp hygienist, sometimes we're just thrown in there and no, we don't have time to take proper notes. Um, I have worked in offices before where there are half an hour appointments. So I don't have time to take proper notes. Do I want to be behind for every single patient? No, but sometimes I do have to be um, so that I can take proper notes. But then if that office says, well, we're not paying you to be behind, then I'm not going to be behind, but I might not be able to take proper notes. But unfortunately, we always have to think, you know, this is our, I guess, name on the line. So if you're behind, that's not your fault. That's the office's fault in some cases. We always have to take proper notes, absolutely. But my experience as a temp hygienist is sometimes we are just thrown in there and we have to make do with what we have. Um, I was actually talking to a temp hygienist before, which I probably shouldn't say this, 
But she said something to me. She was um, an older temp hygienist. I'm not saying that this is true in all cases. But she kind of said to me, like, you know, I like being a temp hygienist because I don't have to clean as hard. I don't have to clean as, as effectively because I know that the patients aren't going to see me again. I kind of looked at her and I kind of said, no, um, you shouldn't be saying that. You should always do a good job at every single appointment. I feel sorry for that office because you are making it a lot harder for the other hygienists to clean after you. So as a temp hygienist, you know, my experience is that some offices and some staff look at you and just assume that you're not doing a good job and that you don't care. I care for every single patient. It doesn't matter if I've been to the office before. It doesn't matter if I've seen the patient before. It doesn't matter, but I care and I work hard for every single um, patient, for every single appointment. But some offices don't see you as working as hard, which is interesting. So that's my experience so far. And another thing is that sometimes, you know, some offices are amazing. They will help you. They will take the time to explain things to you and show you where things are. But I've also been in offices where I'm just thrown in. I'm the only hygienist there. And they're just like, okay, here's your charts. Have fun. It's like, um, where's the x-ray machine? Where's the sensors? Do you have sensors? Is it manual? What do you guys do here? You know, so we are just thrown in there sometimes. So you do have to make use of what you have but your quality of your cleaning should never be minimized because you're a temp hygienist so make sure to always work hard um another thing though is too which is nice the office knows you are a temp hygienist so if you're behind they understand because you're a new office it probably took you a minute to look through the chart it probably took you a minute to find out where, where everything is, you know, they understand that if you're half an hour behind for, for every patient, I'm sure they will say something and be like, listen, do you need help? Because you're really behind. Um, when I used to work full time, we had a temp hygienist in, you know, every so often. And some of them were amazing and some of them were not so amazing in the sense that they would never ask questions. Um, we would try to help them and they were just like, oh, I know, I know. And you're like, okay. Um, they were rude. Um, some temp hygienists just honestly didn't seem to care. They were rude to patients and they wouldn't write in the chart properly, which we always thought was interesting because it was always, I'm sorry, but it was always the older hygienists that didn't ask questions. They didn't want help. They would barely write in the chart. So we're kind of thinking, okay, they know what they're doing. They have like 10 years experience, why are they doing everything wrong? It's because sometimes they're just set in their ways, right? But I can also say the opposite about us younger hygienists. You know, we may think we know everything, but we don't. Um, or we may ask too many questions where we're being annoyed. You know, I had a young hygienist, and I'm saying that because we're the same age, but she would ask so many questions. She would say things like, okay, so um, where is this, where is that, where is that, where is that? And I'd be kind of like, okay, I'm getting to that. I'm just showing you how to sterilize the instruments first. She would say, I know how to sterilize, so I, we don't need to go through this. I'd be like, oh, okay. But then she'd come to me after her next patient because she didn't know how to turn on the statum because she had never used a statum before, and that's fine. But I guess she should have listened to me when I was explaining it, right? So... It can work both ways for younger hygienists and older ones, but that's just my experience as a temp hygienist so far. I, I love it. I do um, because I can work where I want, when I want. If I don't like an office, which has happened, I make sure to not say that I'm available ever again to that office. Um, you know, if I don't like the office, well, at least I know that after being there for eight hours, if I love an office, I will let them know that I can help them out any time. If I feel like I need time off, I just take time off. If I say to myself, oh, it's summertime, I would like to take a month off. Sure. Why not? Because I'm a temp. I don't have to work anywhere. So I love that. But again, temping isn't for everybody, um, because the, the, the hard things are that you are thrown in and sometimes you don't know what the heck is happening. You could work for an office that's just awful and the staff is horrible and you can't wait to get out of there. That can happen. You can work with patients that are just crazy. 
that can happen anywhere. Um, and offices expect certain things at temps, but then at the same time, they just assume they're not doing a thorough job sometimes too. I don't like that. Um, and every office is different. Have I said this yet? Every office is different. So even if you learn how the one office likes to do their charts, the next office might like them completely different. So even I get confused sometimes where some offices have a unit of time as being 10 minutes. Some offices, a unit of time is 15 minutes. So I'll say I need a two unit um, appointment for a child, which is half an hour. But then in the other office, they could be saying, well, our units are 10 minutes. You only want 20 minutes for a child. And I'll say, no, no, no. I mean, <coughs> Hmm. I'm sorry, I had a little cough there. Um, so that's the part that gets confusing to me. Some offices want you to do a PSR on, on every single patient, whereas others don't care about the PSR. Some say to do x-rays every year, some say every two years, some say every six months. So you know, every office is different. So that's kind of a hard thing of being a temp, but I love it. And I hope that there will be more temps out there. Um, but at the same time, I guess we don't want too many temps because we want people to actually stay in one office, right? Um, if you see an office hiring a temp every day, it's probably not a good sign. But anyways, um, yeah. So I hope this helped out everybody. Please be nice to our temps. If you are a temp, good luck. I know it's hard sometimes. If you're not a temp, you know, feel our pain sometimes when we don't know what we're doing, but we always try to work hard. So I hope this helps you guys and I'll see you in the next video.